How you doing today? Uh, my name is Steve. I go by Jump Score at HobbyMachineShop.com. Um, I was speaking to Ray over at Hobby Machine Shop. He just got himself a new PM45 CNC machine, which is basically a like same machine as my ZX45 here. Uh, and I was discussing with him a little bit about uh, comp uh, backlash compensation and adjusting the Gibbs and um, I don't know how to exactly show what I'm saying without showing you some of the examples of uh, what I've found over the years. Um, I'm not a college-educated boy, so I'll show you how I learned what's going on underneath the table. When you, when you start having problems and you can't get accuracy and you keep tightening things up and it, it seems to be getting worse, and, and I'll show you why. And in a hobby CNC, um, dovetails are normally what you end up with. You, you don't have ball linear rails. And due to the fact of uh, adhesion, friction, torque, uh, torsion, and deflection, um, having too tight of a dovetail and um, the size of your ball screws and such will actually cause you to be less accurate than um, if you left things loose. Uh, loose to the sense of no play, but no tension. Um, dovetails have a lot of surface area, and when you set two pieces of metal on top of each other, the smoother they are, they actually adhere. And the longer they sit there, I don't know if you've ever set uh, two pieces of glass on top of each other or anything like that, if they sit there for an extended period of time, um, they're almost impossible to get together, get apart, I'm sorry. Uh, what's happening is the actual adhesion of the two materials, even perfectly clean, causes uh, uh, an, an initial amount of torque to get the motion to start to move. Once there is motion, then it takes far less torque to actually maintain that motion. So uh, in the sense of dovetails, the small machines uh, like the 704s, they have, um, I believe, uh, non-scrape dovetails. The, I think the, one of them I did, did have scrape dovetails. It just matters what's coming out of your box because no telling what's coming out of China. But scrape dovetails overcome some of this by reducing the amount of material that's touching between the two surfaces, leaving the valleys and high points, and the high points all are what's touching between the two surfaces, not the entire surface. So that breaks up that adhesion to a smaller area. Uh, the smaller the area is contacting between the two parts, the less adhesion you have to overcome for the first motion. So what I want to show you is, say for example, I'm going to move in a little closer. I'm my own cameraman and I'm not very good at this stuff. So what I want to show you is, I've got an example here. I've just got a flat piece of metal laying on top of my mill. And it's it's smooth surface. And it's just got some weights on it. Um, the stuff behind there is another example. And what I've got is a bungee cord. So I'm going to start adding torque or force and pulling on this bungee cord. But the moment this breaks loose and starts to move, I'm going to stop pulling. And I want you to notice how far it continues to move once it's broke the adhesion. So I'm still pulling, still pulling, still pulling. Whoop didn't really work the way I wanted it to because it let me try it again because it broke once now I'm still pulling still pulling there you go see how far it moved after it broke the adhesion that's that's the difference between the adhesion and the torque necessary or force necessary to continue the motion uh, the motion continued for another inch and a half two inches even though as the bungee cord got shorter it was pulling less. So once the initial adhesion is broke, it takes far less force to move it. So if your gibs are really tight, 
then it's going to take a lot of torque before it starts the motion, then move. What that counts out to be is, uh, let's say if you were in step mode and you were telling your, uh, <coughs> and you had an indicator on your table, and you were telling the axis to move 1,000th at a time, and you're pressing the button, and it's not moving, it's not moving, it's not moving, and you keep continue pressing the button, and then all of a sudden you'll see the thing jump 5,000th. Well, the reason it did that was you had to break the adhesion of the dovetail, and then the stored-up torque that's in the ball screw actually continued to travel beyond the point where you wanted it to go. Um, and it, it can be considerable if you have it too too tight. You add in the fact that you're going to put a 30-pound vise, 40-pound vise on here, uh, the weight of your material, uh, cutter force, and um, too tight is actually your enemy. Um, I'll show you, i got to break this up into a couple of videos because I'm not very good at this. I just want to get a couple of examples. Uh, that's the first thing, is breaking adhesion. The second is, um, I grabbed a ball screw and kind of lined it up on my machine here. About the same length as the one that's underneath this table. Actually, it's a little shorter than what's under there. To represent the length of the ball screw and... The motor on the end, let me move my camera around here just a little bit and see if I can get to this indicator. I'll, I'll back out. If you notice, I got this end of the ball screw not clamped tight, but firmly held in a V-block. The other end of the ball screw is actually clamped tight and the uh, V-block is clamped to the table. So there can be no motion. So all the motion in the ball screw is going to be... Um, <coughs> actual torque, twisting. Uh, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit, try to get a little closer here so you can actually see what's going on. And with very little force, I'm going to hang this, this little weight on a pair of vice grips that I have clamped to the end of this screw. Now this screw's 24 inches long, probably between the two blocks. And I'm going to show you, it, you don't have to read how many thousands it is, because it's not that... I, it is an accuracy I'm looking for, but I just want to show you how much torque, tensile torque, flexes in a ball in a ball screw. So here's hanging the weight, and you can see with just that small amount of weight, which is probably less than two pounds, I'm moving, I'm twisting that ball screw four or five thousandths. It's however you figure, you know, the rotation. The more force, the more twist. So if, you're, if your gibs are too tight, your screw is doing this first, okay? Your coupling is doing exactly the same thing. Your coupling will twist up and add torque. And then when it finally breaks loose uh, the, uh, the adhesion, then all of this stored up energy continues to move the table beyond where you actually wanted to go. So if you've set your backlash compensation for this, then you've set your backlash compensation to uh, include all of this stored up energy and torque. Uh, too tight's not the answer. Uh, just this little two pound weight is twisting this 30 inch, 30 inches of bar here. So that's why the bigger the ball screw you can get underneath your table, your axis, the better because you have less twist to it. Um, it isn't whether it's strong enough to push and pull it, it's whether how much it'll twist per foot. Uh, so uh, that'll be the end of this video. And then from this point, I'm going to go showing how to actually set the gib tension, how I do it. I've learned to do it. Um, I'm not a machinist. I did not go to school for this. I couldn't spell CNC eight years ago. I uh, never used a lathe or a mill in my life until about eight years ago. So all this I've learned off the internet and reading. Um, but 
there. I learned by mistakes, believe me. So uh, that's it for this one. I, I'm going to make another video actually showing um, how to do the give adjustment. And uh, Z axis is a little different. I'll have to show you how to do it. Uh, because of the dead weight on this head, you're, you, you have to do it a slightly different way. So that's it for this one. And then try to do another one later on this afternoon once I get set up.